Welcome back. We're talking about some of China's recent social reforms. Now we take a look at China's aging society. Right now, about 15% of China's population is over the age of 60. A much greater number is currently in the workforce, about five workers for every retiree. But the United Nations predicts that by 2050, China is expected to have half a billion people over the age of 60, a population that will increasingly use government-funded social services. And it will shrink to only 1.6 workers for every retiree. The Chinese government is taking steps. It has shifted its policy on family planning, expanding to a two-child policy at the start of this year. For a look at China's aging society and the impact on the government, we're joined by Dali Young from Beijing. He's a professor of political science at the University of Chicago. And with me here in the studio is Heian Wang, managing partner of the China India Institute. Thanks to both of you for joining us. Hey, and let me start with you. As I mentioned, until recently, China had a very strict one-child policy. Now, it's a policy that allowed the country to flourish economically. But what kind of challenges does the consequences of that policy now pose with an aging population? And I think that uh, the two-child policy allowing couples to have two children are aimed at, uh, you know, uh, not completely solving the aging society issue, but at least uh, long-term wise that it could help reduce that issue. But, but it, the effect of that would take a long time because even if the couples want to uh, produce kids, the kids would not become a working force until 15, 20 years later. That's one. And two, uh, despite the encouraging policy, as people across the country, across the world actually, as people get well educated, as their income increase, in fact, their desire to produce kids actually reduce. So I, I don't think that China's fertility rate is going to go past beyond 1.6 um, really easily. And that would still be below the replacement rate. So I think that over a long term, the overall declining of the total population and overall declining of the workforce is, seems to be an unstoppable trend. And that would just uh, not be an easy way to solve the aging society issue just by the two-child policy itself. So we won't see a solution in the short term? Uh, not, not in the short term at all. And even in the long term, and I think that because the fertility rate will be lower than the replacement rate, so I think that the aging society is just going to get older and grayer. Right. Dolly, uh, looking at those figures that I mentioned, by 2050, 40% of China's population will be over the age of 60. Now, of course, an aging population places further additional economic burdens on the government. How has the Chinese government prepared, prepared for this uh, to take care of the growing numbers of people who are aging? Well, first of all, let me emphasize that aging in itself is actually a sign of achievement. Uh, the life expectancy in China around 1950 was actually around 40, 45 years old. So today, the longevity, life expectancy at birth is around 75, and it is going to continue to increase. And that's a sign of prosperity, of actually growing achievement. The challenge is how you balance the uh, different age groups across the generations in any society. And as you emphasized, the challenge for China, however, is that increasingly, especially because of the baby boom generation in the 1960s and 70s, that massive population boom is going to be retiring in the next decade or so. And as a result, of course, also because of the also, the shrinkage in the number of children beginning in the 1980s in particular. So we have a situation where the uh, so sort of support ratio is going to be much higher. The Chinese government, however, has uh, been very delayed in responding to it. And the adjustment in the population policy, as uh, Ms. Wang has just mentioned, actually so sort of is not going to have a massive impact. However, I do detect that this moment uh, a mini uh, baby boom. In fact, in cities such as Beijing and so on, uh, expected mothers are finding it hard to get the time with PD, uh, uh, so sort of, for example, uh, doctors, because there is actually a mini uh, baby boom, at, at least at this particular time. But overall, though, uh, uh, so sort of Chinese society, like other Asian societies, the uh, fertility rate is not going to be changing very dramatically. 
The other problem is also, of course, there is also a gender balance and so on, but uh, I want to get back to you now. Um, if we look at economic factors, you yeah. know, we know that the uh, Chinese government has revised its uh, growth forecast. Yes. It's going to be in the single digits. It's not going to get up to double digits. No. Um, how much of an impact does an aging society have on economic growth? I think that aging society has many, many impacts. One is that we know that economic growth comes from the population, working population growth, mm -hmm. comes from the investment growth, capital growth, comes from the practice productivity growth. And I think that as the working force declines, actually, we could expect a, a one percentage point uh, annual GDP growth be taken out because of that shrinking working force. That's one. Two, and I think that because of the aging society, um, people do worry about rainy days. And that mm. takes away the desire for consumption. Because as long as people are worried about health care and, and taking care of their own pension uh, when they get old, so the desire to consume right away would not be as strong as the government hopes, particularly as we try to shift towards a consumption-driven society. And another factor is you tend to find that younger societies tends to be more creative, more entrepreneurial, that as people get older, people get more conservative. And that graying society takes away some of that entrepreneurial drive. And, and, uh, and another factor is that an aging society would require more of the government spending. And that would increase the fiscal deficit. And whatever dollars you put in taking care of the, the, the social right. welfare is the money you cannot spend on other investments, such as on other in infrastructure in investment and necessary, or on military spending, defense spending, etc. So, so invariably, aging society's economic growth rate always tends to be slower than the younger population because you no longer have that dividend in terms of uh, competitiveness in terms of labor cost as a shrinking working force goes on and then the labor cost would definitely rise up and higher course, and that takes away the competitiveness on the labor cost front. Right and of course one of the other consequences is yeah. that in addition to reducing consumer spending sure. the government's going to be collecting less taxes aren't they? Oh, absolutely. So, 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 so the double whammies. Uh, on yes. one hand, you have to spend more. On the other hand, the shrinking working population contributes less uh, tax revenues. And that, mm -hmm. that is one of the big challenges that China faces mm -hmm. in terms of the national pension systems. Right. Because you have such a burden to not only pay for the retirees from the previous legacy systems, uh, for that guaranteed pensions. And then you have the large uh, current retirees, or the baby boomers, mm -hmm. all re approaching retirees, but then they are actually borrowing uh, the savings from today's working right. populations to cover uh, the guarantees from yesterday. Now, what about the future generations? So, so I don't think that there is an easy solution. We were down, down the line, we'll face a big shortfall in terms of the, 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 the ability of the pension systems to cover all. Uh, Dolly, I want to get your view on the one-child policy. I mean, China has amended that one-child policy. Certain categories of couples would now be allowed to have two children. But that has led to a gender imbalance. Uh, there are also too many old people, too few workers. How does the change, in your view, in the one-child policy help fix that problem? I mean, will it fix it, or is it too little too late? Well, uh, certainly the move, uh, number one, historically China's one-child policy was primarily applied to the urban population in the rural areas, actually it's a more relaxed policy. So beginning this year, formally it's shifted to a minimum of two children kind of policy. In other words, for example, every couple, if they have a single birth each time, single child, they, they are entitled to have two birth. But of course, imagine the first time you have only one child and then you have twins, you can have three children and so on. So therefore, it's not a strict two-child or two-children policy. Uh, but overall, though, however, uh, this will have produced a short-term um, blimp because the generation of people, for example, who are in their 30s and even 40s, 
want to play a little catch up if they want to have a, officially have a, a second child. At the same time, however, there are couples who already may have had another child, sometimes especially for the, uh, for the high income, for the middle class and so on, they may have even gone abroad for another child. But overall though, this will help to ease some of those trends. Uh, but at the same time, however, the legacy situation, uh, in other words, the strict uh, application of the population control policy from the 1980s through the recent years, however, that legacy cannot be undone, including, for example, estimated of between uh, 20 to, uh, to 40 million uh, the so-called surplus men. And that, of course, raises all sorts of issues for young men who are into marriageable age today, they are already faced with actually a sh shrinking pool, a, sh a smaller pool of women. And that means some men are not going to be able to find it easy to get married, and the cost of getting married actually is going to be higher. And there are all sorts of issues that sociologists and other social scientists have studied in terms of potentially rising crimes and so on. But, but this effect of the sex imbalance is being counterbalanced to some extent by the growing of the population. A growing population at the same time is calmer, is less prone to violence potentially, and so on. So we actually have a much more complicated situation. Yeah, and very quickly, let's look at another consequence, and that is poverty. Mm. Uh, it, it poses a challenge for the Chinese authorities. 65% of elderly people live, living in rural areas yes. are living below the poverty uh, yes. line. Yes. How are they being helped? I think that the Chinese government recognized that, particularly in the pension reforms, because the Chinese government, China's pension, actually the whole system, started really late in 1997. So it, the whole pension system, the social security system is quite underdeveloped, actually. It would take a long time to evolve. Even for the OECD countries, it takes them from 1960s until now to gradually build this social safety network. And then when China built, tried to build the comprehensive pension coverage for the elderly, they did cover 96% of right. the rural residents. However, the meaning of those coverage is really quite minimal because uh, the, the monthly pension that elderly folks from in the rural areas may receive is maybe $10, $12. And that 100 you know, $200 a year it really amounts to very little. That's one. I think that there needs to be a significant tiltering of coverage towards the rural poor, the elderly folks. And two, I think that the, the, the migrants moving to the cities, leaving a lot of these elderly folks without the care of their children, that is, a, that is added to, to the poverty situations. On the one hand, they receive a minimum amount of subsidies from the government. On the other hand, their kids are going away to the cities. They are left alone without any uh, self-support. So, so that a short of a, short of significant tiltering mm. of coverage for mm. the rural poor, I don't think that 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 that, that there is any easy solutions.